Hey there guys, it's Tom here from Mobile DJ Tech Tips UK and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be showing you a quick little tip that I personally use when it comes to taking a booking for every single client that I do. Um, but before we get into that, if you like these kind of videos, feel free to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down guys, the choice is completely up to you. Also feel free to subscribe because there's a lot of you watching the videos but not subscribing and plus it doesn't cost you guys anything and it helps me out a lot. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into that video. Okay, so what you're going to need for this is literally some plain blank A4 paper, a pen or pencil, and a math set. It's optional. A folder, doesn't have to be green, can be any color you want. Also some clear sleeve um, little folders that you can put inside. And last but not least, two diaries, one large, one small. Okay, so you're probably wondering, why do I need some A4 paper? Well, you don't need A4 paper, it could be any kind of paper that you're going to bring with you. Um, I personally just bring some A4 paper, some blank paper. Um, and what I do is I use a pen or pencil, whatever I have on me, and I draw a diagram of the actual venue itself. You're probably wondering, why do I need some blank A4 paper? Well, it doesn't have to be blank A4 paper. It could be any kind of paper that you have on you. But I personally use blank A4 paper just so that I can draw myself a diagram like this. I want to get into this. So first of all, when it comes to meeting up with the client or taking a booking from the client, I always take notes into my bigger diary here. So if the client calls me on the phone, I get all the necessary information I need and I stick it into this diary here. And then later on then I go along and I transfer all the information into the smaller diary right here which is always kept in my gig bag. Now you're probably wondering why do you need two? Well as I said I take this with me when it comes to going to meet up with the client. If it's a phone booking I take all the information from the client on this big diary here and then I transfer it later on into my smaller diary which I said is kept into my gig bag and then if I forget to check this diary I know this diary here has all the relevant information that I need for the gig itself because it's always going to be in my gig bag and it's going to be kept nowhere else. So you're probably saying why don't you keep track of your bookings on like your calendar on your computer etc etc. Well I've tried this before but I accidentally forgot to save the information or I believe there was also one time where my hard drive got corrupted and I lost all my information so that for me isn't a completely reliable source. At least with this, it's gonna it's gonna be existing in my big diary and also my small diary. So therefore, it's in it's impossible for this information to get lost. Also, it's a good idea to have two diaries, not only just because um so you don't lose your information for your booking, but you don't want to be logging around a big diary with you in your gig bag. So something small like this is gonna come in handy. Now these were not expensive at all. I literally picked these up from my local pound shop, um, or a local dollar store if you're in America or anything that sells anything for one pound or equivalent and that's where I got these it was not expensive whatsoever and it's a cheap and handy little purchase because your information is always going to exist in one place it's either going to be in my gig bag or it's either going to be up in my office can't lose that a little tip for you as well if information doesn't exist in more than one place then it doesn't exist at all because if it gets lost in one place and you only have one copy of it then you've lost it completely. So having two copies of information is always a good idea. So coming back to the math set and the pen or the pencil, whatever it is you're going to be using, I use this to draw out a floor map. So what I would normally do is I will bring down a bit of A4 paper with me to the venue. Um, actually, before I get into that, this is actually a quick little tip I should also share with you. If you're going to be taking a booking from the client, it's always a good idea to ask the client if you can actually go along and view the venue itself. So you can kind of get a brief layout on where you're going to be set up, how big the venue is, how much gear you're roughly going to need to bring down with you, etc, um, etc. Et so I like to go down and I like to take a rough sketch of what the, the room looks like, the exits, the entrances, parts of the, the hall or whatever it is that I'm going to be DJing in to make sure that I don't get in the way or have any of my gear blocking any emergency exits or I can also take into account if there is a sound limiter in the hall or the venue itself so I can mark down exactly roughly where I can need to be set up or if I can come to an arrangement with the venue itself so I can change location for my setup. 
So then the math set comes into play where I later, later on come back home to the office and I take my scrap drawing and I use the ruler and whatnot inside of the math set to make a neater and more accurate drawing. So I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to leave a little annotation up on the screen right here for you so you should be able to see it perfectly. Here is my layout here. So I, I call this my floor plan. So here is the literally the venue itself. And up here then I've got time of arrival, which is 11.30. Setup complete time is 1.30. Music stop time is midnight. Out time is 20 past one in the morning. So I have to be there for 11.30 and I've got to be out by 1.30 in the morning. This is going to be um, a, an event that's coming up on the 24th of September. So hopefully we do have a gig log for you. Um, if the client allows me to record some of the, uh, some of the event, um, I will. If not, I will try and get some of the setup for you. So this is going to be in Stuart's Hall on the 24th of September. Um, so I have the times uh, that I need to be in and out for, the setup time, completion, all of the time is here. And then over to my right hand side, I would have the venue's address and the venue's contact number. Now this is crucial that you have a contact number because if there is a private parking uh, spot where you can park in or a loading bay which you can load in but you can't access the loading bay instead of you having to get out you can call the uh, manager or the venue or whoever you have the contact number for at the venue. You can just contact them and let them know that you're on the way. Can they please have the relevant bay open for you? So as you can see then further down here, I have the layout of the hall I'll be DJing in. Okay, so as you can see, this is the venue itself. I have it drawn out in a neatish kind of a layout. So I have the length and the width of the hall. Now if you're probably wondering how do I use that, I use a little laser point measure to measure the length and the width of the venue itself. So I have a fair idea on how many speakers I need to bring and how much gear I have to bring with me and how much I have to charge the the client according to what I'm bringing with me. Not only that, it's also a great idea so I can know where the fire exits are, where I'm going to be set up and if there is a sound limiter. So if you look over towards the left hand side here, there's the entrance and the emergency exit. Now I have it colored in red also, you don't have to do this, I personally just do it for my own records. And then just up from that again on the left hand side we have the storage room. Over towards the right, we have another emergency exit and up towards the top right, we have another emergency exit. Then kind of just up right up at the top of the hall here, there is a sound limiter. Now, if you don't know what a sound limiter is, a sound limiter is a device with a microphone which has a, a EQ level on there. And basically, if it picks up too much bass, which that's what normally triggers it, if you, have, if you have too much bass going through your speakers, it's going to clip straight into the red. And once it goes into the red, it's going to cut all the power off to the sockets and or your power outlets. And therefore, then you're going to have no power to power your gear and all the music will come to a stop. So since the sound limiter is up towards the top here, I'm going to be setting up literally right in front of it. So the speakers are facing away from the sound limiter itself. This is crucial also because if you have the speakers blaring directly in front of a microphone, obviously you're going to pick up a lot more sound. If you're kind of in front of it, but you've got the speakers pointed away, you're going to get a lot less sound. And then directly then in front of my DJ setup where I am here. So I'm going to be here. And then just below that, we have the dance floor, which is 5.6 meters. Now this is not going to be provided by me because I don't provide dance floors. This is going to be provided by a third party. But I, I literally um, just asked the client if you're going to be having a dance floor and they told me they are, they told me the measurements and this is crucial also so I know um, how, how big I need to have my equipment spread over so I can cover the dance floor, lighting especially so I can cover the dance floor with lighting. And um, you're probably wondering what are these little purple dots around the bottom? Well as you can see right down the bottom here I have a little purple circle drawn with a black square, some little lights or with little, little lines coming up from there. These are my flat paws, and then the color they want around the room is for purple. 
Um, also, I've written down here, water-based haze allowed at venue. Now, I asked the venue when I went down to go see it. Um, I asked the manager of the venue itself if I'm allowed to use any smoke or haze. And they said to me, smoke is not allowed, but haze is as long as it's water-based, so it doesn't set off the alarm in the hall. So all of this little uh, relevant information then I put in with the agreement with me and the client. Um, also the agreement with the payment, the equipment that's going to be needed with the breakdown, etc. So I put all of this then into the folder, which is then what I call a job pack. So I will put all of this into a job pack. So the job pack will include a floor plan like this, a agreement between me and the client, the breakdown cost of the travel cost and the equipment cost of bringing the gear down also for myself. And also any other relevant information will be put into a clear sleeve folder and then that will be put into my green folder which I have for the client and then I will put like a little sticky note on the clear sleeve just probably somewhere around the top of the client's name because obviously I'm going to have more than one booking in the folder at one given time I don't want to get the, the bookings mixed up so that's what I would call a job pack is once it's got all the relevant information there and then I can go along and look at my diaries that one would be on my office and the other one will be in my gig bag I can't ever lose any information and I can't stress how important I think that this is this is and I think it would be a good idea for all of you guys to do it also because if you can actually look at the venue itself before you actually get there to actually do the gig itself it's a massive advantage because you don't have to worry about last minute oh am I going to have enough equipment am I going to have enough extension leads am I going to have enough sockets at least then you're kind of laid out you know exactly what's going to be where you can take any relevant pictures that you're going to need on your phone or your ipod or your ipad whatever it is on your even on your camera i normally just bring my phone and just take some pictures on my phone as well of the hall um this is going to give you a massive head start because you don't want to have to bring unnecessary gear obviously you can bring a backup or a couple of backups for uh, just in case anything goes wrong bring like a couple more extension leads a couple more cables because you never know what might break this will break down the unnecessary hassle of bringing massive benefit to a mobile dj or any dj in that matter of fact because the last thing you want to be doing is locking around a lot of gear having to set all that gear up performing the whole entire night or whatever time you're going to be there for and then having to pack it all down and pack it all away so it's all about trying to make your life easier trying to make it as quickly and easy as possible to set up break down so the price of all of this is less than a couple of pound i paid one pound for the mark for the mass set i paid two pounds one pound each for the diary so it's three pounds i spent plus a pen i just had lying around so this is a great idea to make your life easier it's only going to cost you a little bit of money five pound in total for the paper for the folder for the mass set and the two diaries five pounds will save me a lot of hassle. Therefore, I'm not gonna lose any of my information. I have everything in one neat, tidy spot. And I also have my layout, my floor plan, so I know exactly where I need to be, at what type, all with all the relevant information for the venue, and where I'm gonna have all my equipment set up. So when I get there, I just need to set it all up, and I'm good to go. This is a very inexpensive way to save a lot of hassle and to give you a lot less stress when it comes to performing for the gig. So you have all the relevant information there. You know what the venue looks like. You know exactly where the equipment is going to need to be set up. And also you're going to have all the relevant information you need in case you need to contact the venue, in case you need to contact the client. Everything is going to be in one little job pack. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for this part of the video. If you guys, again, like these kind of videos, feel free to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's completely up to you guys. Also, smash that subscribe button because I know there is a lot of you guys watching these videos. If they're helping you, feel free to help me back by giving me a little bit of support and smashing that subscribe button. Also, if you have any comments, any questions at all, just drop them down in the box below and I will literally reply back to you within 24 hours. I read all your comments and I appreciate all your feedback. Uh, also, I'm going to be working on a mapping maybe for the DDJ T1 as one person has asked me does the mapping I have for the DDJ S1 work on the T1. Well, currently not yet. I'm going to borrow my friend's T1. Um, I'm going to try and work out a mapping for that. So uh, if you guys do want to see a mapping for Recordbox DJ on the uh, DDJ T1, please let me know and um, I will see what I can do for you.
So without further ado, I'm going to leave it there. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon.